Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Peter May. I'm the chairman of the Universities and Colleges Christian Fellowship, known as UCCF, and we have organized this two-week tour where Bill Craig will travel around the country visiting several universities engaged in either lectures or debates. Tonight is the opening event of this tour, and we're delighted that you've come out and braved the wet weather, which is a fairly grey evening outside the last I saw of it, and we look as though we have substantially filled the building. I have taken the liberty of deciding that we won't have, after the formal debate, we won't have questions from the floor. And there were big groans when I suggested that, but those of you who know John Humphreys well know that he asks good questions on behalf of the public. Seemingly almost every, the students may not know this because it's early in the morning of the Today program. <laughs> But um, the older folk here know very well that John is always pitching in with the good questions, even handily, asking them both ways. And so the reason we have the three chairs set down here is for the latter part, after the formal debate, we're going to assemble our two debaters and John Humphreys, and they will have the best part of half an hour to tease out the issues further in a more conversational dialogue style. So have a row, you mean. John's already getting a bit uppity. I suspect it'll be a row. <laughs> I'm sure it's going to be a very gentlemanly conversation. Church historian David Edwards wrote this. The gospel comes alive when it's being tested against needs and against rivals. He wrote that Christianity grows strong in the open air. And the whole thrust of this two weeks is to bring it into open forum where people can bring their own objections, viewpoints, disagreements, and debate will form a, a very important part of it, and question times will be a, a key feature of everything that we do. So finally, it remains for me to introduce our chairman for tonight. I have already suggested. It, it is interesting with celebrities like John, I and mean, some of us feel we know him so well. He it comes into our home uh, almost every morning. Those of you who are not up early enough will know him from Mastermind, uh, which he regularly presents on BBC television. Besides his radio journalism and his television work, he's also an author and a broadsheet journalist. So I imagine that he is familiar to most of us, and it is now my uh, great pleasure to introduce who will then introduce our debaters tonight. Please welcome the mastermind presenter, John Humphreys. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Peter. Thank you very much. I am I'm, I'm particularly grateful that you mentioned mastermind. It has to be said because it's relatively new for me that I thought I, I wasn't going to try anything new ever again and then they asked me about three years ago whenever it was to do mastermind so I thought I'd give it a go and it's wonderful I, I mean I, not necessarily the program I've never actually seen the program but it but <laughs> but I can't tell you, particularly since we're here in Westminster, how wonderful it is, because for all of my career, and most of my career, I've been a hack for nearly 50 years, mostly I've been interviewing politicians. And now I'm chairing a quiz, and I'm talking to people who actually want to answer the question. <laughs> it, it, it is a, the ultimate cultural shock, I tell you. But you do admittedly get some fairly bizarre answers to some of the, we, we, you know, we may, you may know, we do this celebrity mastermind thing. And, and it has to be said that the people invited on to celebrity mastermind are not necessarily, not necessarily the brightest coins in the mint. Not, not all of them anyway. And we had one on, I'm not sure whether they broadcast the program yet, but we had one on where I, yeah, we always kick off with a couple of easy questions, you know, to get them in the mood and all that. And I asked one of them, um, as the opening question, what uh, breakfast cereal do you associate with prison? Oh. Yeah, hey, quite so. Yeah, you know what he said? Cheerios. <laughs> Which, <laughs> I, there is a point to it, isn't there? You can see it, you know. Maybe he was just commenting on the government's policy towards our... Anyway, I don't know. <laughs> uh, 
enough, enough of that. We want to get on to the debate. I don't want to hold you back from these two esteemed gents. You know them, of course, otherwise you wouldn't be here. Um, at least I assume you wouldn't be here if you didn't know them. Uh, you know Will Craig, oh, William Lane Craig, to give him his, uh, his time. I'm not going to run through his CV or anything. That's too boring for words. You know who he is, what he's done, what he, what he believes in. What you may not know, and I discovered this this morning, and he may deny this, of course, but too late now, is, is how he actually got to believe in God. And, and it, it all has to do with a rather beautiful young redhead at the age of 15. I mean, <laughs> who sat in front of him in class. You know, I go no further than that. I'll leave it to him to see how much of that he's, he's prepared to vouchsafe to you. What can I say about Lewis? A regular fixer, I'm delighted to say on the Today programme. He is, he is a great adornment to, our, to the national scene. Indeed, he's essential, in my view, to the national scene. You know him? Well, at least if you don't, you should acquaint yourself with his work. Buy his book, Six Impossible Things Before Breakfast, because it's terrific. Well, I think it's terrific, but there we are. Um, he had a faith until he was 15. He was Jewish. Well, he is Jewish. Of course, you don't stop being Jewish. But he, he practiced his faith until he was about 15, lived in South Africa, left South Africa, no longer believes, as you know. Um, and no doubt he will tell us uh, why. However, we're going to kick off uh, with uh, Bill. And the deal is this. They get 20 minutes each. Then there's a rebuttal, 10 minutes each. Then there's a rebuttal of the rebuttal, seven minutes each, and then there's a five minute sort of summary. So that's how it's going to work. Ten, 20 minutes, 10 minutes, seven minutes, and five minutes. That's, uh, that's the deal. And then at the end of all that, um, we will sit together, the three of us, and um, see if there are any other issues to explore or perhaps make it a little more personal, possibly even animated, though I dare say they'll be perfectly animated while they're here at the lectern. So would you first welcome, please, Bill Craig. Thank you, John. Thank you, and good evening. I want to begin by expressing my thanks to UCCF for inviting me to participate in tonight's debate. And I also want to say what a real privilege it is to be sharing the podium with Dr. Wolpert this evening. And of course, I want to thank all of you for coming out to share this evening with us. It's my hope that our discussion tonight will be a genuine practical help to you as you work through these issues yourself personally. Now, in asking the question, is God a delusion, it's imperative right from the start that we clearly define our terms. The dictionary definition of a delusion is a false belief or opinion. Therefore, if Professor Wolpert is to persuade us that belief in God is a delusion, he must show that belief to be false. Accordingly, in tonight's debate, I'm going to defend two basic contentions. First, there's no good reason to think that belief in God is false. And secondly, there are good reasons to think that belief in God is true. Consider then my first contention that there's no good reason to think that belief in God is false. Now, I'm going to leave it up to Dr. Wolpert to present arguments against God's existence, and then I'll respond to them in my next speech. But I want to simply note in passing that if he's to justify an affirmative answer to the question before us this evening, then he does owe us such arguments. So let's turn then to my second main contention, that there are good reasons to think that belief in God is true. However unfashionable it may appear, I am actually convinced that there really are good reasons to believe that God exists. And let me just sketch tonight briefly some of those reasons. 